So we have um, um, Paunu Leto Vuari uh, with us. Uh, you probably know him far better than I do, uh, but uh, it sounds really exciting. So thanks for very much for coming. And um, yeah, you start when you're ready. Okay. Um, thanks for the invitation. Thanks for thanks for um, for. Um, uh, Suggesting that uh, we are in the middle of, of uh, triathlon, uh, I also think it's it's quite a heavy program. And um, and now um, after swimming uh, with Hans, going in, in, in the depths of of, um, of Ri and so forth, we can start cycling. I think um, um, my talk is quite theoretical, but I hope it's not boring. Um, uh, I don't have so many examples. If you have time, I will tell a bit about uh, some cases in Helsinki that uh, the locals know, but that might be new. But let's see how the time goes. How much time I have? About 40 minutes or? 40 minutes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Um, um, before, I just realized that Hans was showing these nice books and, um, and the whole history. So uh, I, I realized that I didn't uh, bring my books and uh, I somehow failed to uh, introduce uh, myself in that sense. But uh, it's quite amazing. I mean, Charles Landry is coming uh, on Saturday, I think. Is, is that right? Yeah. And, um uh, I was involved with Jan Verweinen, uh, the late Jan Verweinen, um, in actually um, introducing uh, Charles Landry and Franco Bianchini to Helsinki. It happened in the mid-1990s, so it's, it's more than 20 years ago. It's amazing. I mean, uh, I really am I'm, I'm feeling that I'm kind of, I should really go also to, to Kansas and retire, um, maybe. But, um, but uh, really, um, it was the process that was then preparing uh, the Helsinki um, um, Helsinki's cultural year uh, as, as, as uh, European cultural, cultural capital in 2000, and um, Charles Landry came already in 1995. We had um, uh, in uh, Arabia Ranta uh, in U University of Art and Design, now it's Alto, um, quite an interesting workshop in 1995. Um, there's a book called Managing Urban Change, produced of that, and then later we made a book um, called Creative Cities. I don't know, maybe, maybe you still can get those books from them, uh, Alto. Um, bookstore, or maybe th those are in, in, in internet nowadays, but the Creative City was 1999, and then, of course, uh, 2000, there was the um, Year of Culture. Um, I was making my PhD around that time, and uh, I became quite in interested in, um, actually, in the topic of, of today, um, of um, uh, experiential urbanism, uh, um, the role of um, people in um, making change in cities, basically. I think that's pretty much um, the, um, the topic of my talk. Um, uh, I think um, um, we can um, situate uh, this dis discussion, um, temporary uses, um, all those um, um, initiatives um, Trevor brought in, um, um, tactical urbanism, um, everyday urbanism, um, catalyzed uh, catalyzing architecture, um, like, like Hans, many, many others, um, in broader picture, uh, in the change from uh, industrial to urban society. Um, I think that's what I'll be trying to do today. I realized when, when preparing this talk that um, it's really, it's work in progress, so I don't have this kind of ready-made big point. It's, it's rather uh, thoughts that are uh, developing, um, uh, but clearly, um, 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 I'm interested in, uh, in change, in uh, new ways to initiate change in cities, and um, in what role um, uh, ephemerality, temporariness can have um, in, uh, in that uh, process, in this uh, contemporary uh, situation that is um, defined by, by Henri Lefebvre uh, as, uh, as urban society, uh, by Christian Schmid as even uh, a shift to urban uh, continent in this kind of sense of, of, um, of different um, different processes that are uh, shaping our society, uh, our life, and um, our cities. Um, good. Um, some theoretical uh, points. So clearly, of course, uh, planning, um, um, be it uh, Prut Igo, be it Tapiola, is changing. We are uh, facing a par paradigm change in planning. Um, and um, this is a diagram um, I somehow made a long time ago, but I, I never had time to really qualify this. But um, it's quite funny um, observation that um, it's kind of key innovations in, um, in um, urban planning, urbanism, um, Ebenezer Howard Garden City, um, 
the formalization of modernity planning agenda in uh, 1920s, 1930s by Tsiam, and then its um, first major critiques uh, by Levepre, of course, by Jacobs, by, by Jan Gale, by many, many others, Venturi, etc., in late 60s and, and, uh, and um, early 1970s. Those kind of moments of change um, uh, happen happen same time with um, the big global economic recessions. And um, I don't know how to explain that, but um, sometime, somehow I think, that of, of course, um, there is the um, Asian uh, notion that uh, a crisis is a moment of, of rebirth. It might be that. It also might be that some people simply didn't have work and uh, they had time to think. Um, that also could be. I always imagine Elil Saarinen um, during the, it, this is the year of, of civil war in Finland, uh, 1918. It, it's 100, year, 100 years since civil war. I imagine Elil Saarinen with his team, with, with, with his wife and, and all the friends, sitting in Vitresk in this castle in, in the middle of the, of the forest. The country is in the war. There is no work at all. And then during that winter, they d did this fantastic um, um, plan about the Greater Helsinki, the Greater Helsinki vision, this fantastic uh, watercolors and, and so forth. So there is something strange in, in that uh, crisis, crisis and, and innovation. Um, anyway, um, clearly, uh, the so-called global financial crisis, 2007-2008, uh, um, uh, is um, very visible. This is the um, 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 diagram um, showing um, showing the success of, of companies in, uh, in London Stock Exchange. It's one way to try to understand uh, the economic process. Um, the so-called long cycles of Konrad uh, and, and so forth. We can debate that, that point. But anyway, um, I think there is a question mark. Um, is there um, an um, a, um, innovation moment in planning? And, um, and if, what is the shape of that? And um, I think um, there is a lot of writing, uh, for example, um, for example, by, by Quentin Stevens um, and uh, many others about um, um, the changed um, economic uh, context, uh, very short cycles of, of, of investment um, need to, um, to, to get profit quickly, all these kind of things that um, uh, at least uh, lead a little bit towards, the, towards them, the field of, of, uh, of temporary tactical uh, ephemeral um, interventions. Um, um, these examples uh, Hans brought are, are really great, and I was just... Uh, uh, you said that um, this um, uh, super super key, and it was 100 million cr cr kronor, and then I saw that this uh, elevator was was uh, 12 million US dollars. Actually, they are equal in price, quite exactly, in fact. But um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Is it much or little? With, with, of course, with 10 million, if you can make a big change, it's it's quite cost e efficient compared to even one small building costs the same. Anyway, um, uh, definitely there is. Um, something in this uh, quickness um, in temporary urbanism um, and so forth. Um, but a question mark, I don't think we have um, this kind of um, uh, important one person, important one uh, discourse that would define where we are. It's still uh, pretty, mu pretty much uh, open. And maybe even to today, tomorrow, we can together um, get one step further. As said, it's a thought process. It's, um, it's uh, some proposals uh, for, uh, for our agenda during the lab, not a ready-made um, answer. Um, I was just writing uh, an article to, to one book by, by Routledge um, about this um, question of urban society, and um, I found this, this quote uh, from, uh, from Lefebvre, uh, 1970, from them, um, from them, um, uh, oh, no, for, for the book, um, uh, it, it comes, comes in, in a second. Anyway, um, he's asking that um, 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 if um, uh, this urban society kind of hypothesis of, of Lefebvre is true. Um, uh, he's asking that um, could it uh, enable uh, a development of, uh, of new humanism? Um, um, and he's asking, okay, if, if the previous, if the industrial uh, society, capitalist or not, of course that was time of, of Soviet Union and, and, and so forth, having effectively rejected its earlier form. So basically he's asking, are we in a situation that um, that uh, something that is coming from people, from the users, from citizens, um, the whole debate about uh, diversity, differential space, and so forth, could it be possible to, to realize that now in this new, new moment of, of urban society? And I think that's quite nice. Trevor also mentioned humanism as, as one of the, one of the key, key points of, of, uh, of the d debate here. So there is something um, interesting there. 
uh, for Lefebvre, this uh, notion of urban society, it was a hypothesis. It was kind of thought experiment. And um, he talks about, um, about critical phase, about some kind of moment of crisis which, um, which um, might open possibilities for new, and that's written in 1970, so it's, of course, historical, historical writing. Um, critical phase that is um, foregrounding um, 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 radical social change. Um, um, and uh, what is interesting is that uh, for, for Lefebvre, um, it really is was urban in the sense that it's place-bound. It is um, possibilities that are um, embedded in the complex uh, uh, urban situations, um, self-organizing processes, uh, novelties, and so forth. And Lefebvre is, is, is discussing quite much uh, the notion of habiting. I mean, we all know there's a big debate about networks and, and information and uh, Manuel Castells, Neil Brenner, Christian Schmidt, that was already mentioned. The whole debate about, uh, about planetary urbanization, and that's also a notion from Lefebvre, actually. That's something I didn't have yet time to do, so I cannot present my critique of that. Maybe in the next Nordic Urban Lab, I would really like to shoot down this, uh, this um, pl planetary urbanization. Very, very uh, misunderstood um, debate, especially uh, failing to understand um, the importance of cities. And quite funnily, maybe some of you were listening yesterday, um, there was um, a quite large uh, urban policy meeting in Helsinki organized by the, by the mayor of Helsinki. It's called Helsinki Symposium. Um, of course, it's national uh, fight between something. It's not so important for us. But, um, but um, there was one good point made in, in, in that um, big gathering of all mayors and policymakers and, and people like that, um, that cities are specific. It's um, in, in the field of urban studies, it's a, a, a perennial question. Can we talk about cities at all? Is, do, do cities exist? And of course they do exist on, 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 on some, some level, but uh, when, when you go to the theoretical debate, um, it starts from, from Louis Birth, and, and uh, there is a long, long debate about, um, about uh, what is actually specific in cities, what is specific in, in, um, um, in the urban way of life, as, as, as Birth and, and, and so forth. But clearly, uh, again yesterday, it was made uh, quite well at the point that um, there is something special in cities that um, um, makes them for example, interesting, that makes them um, uh, economically successful, and also something that um, um, justifies um, different um, policy and planning for cities as compared to the rest. And um, clearly it's not, um, not uh, a point against the rest. Uh, I'm living in countryside. Uh, we are having two horses and, and uh, old farmhouse and stuff like that. It's great. But I also like cities. Both are good. But, um, but there is um, definitely something unique in cities. And that's um, a point that is um, not easy to grasp. It's important not easy to grasp. And clearly, um, these Levebrian points um, about, um, about habiting uh, different space, uh, resources coming together in unique constellations, making something new, innovation, novelties possible. There is something important um, which um, should be, uh, again, um, restated and re-theorized uh, in, the, in the contemporary situation, in the situation where we are right now with, uh, with all these things we know, global uh, mobile phones, a new agency, uh, artificial intelligence, all that. There is a very, very, uh, I would say, um, fantastic and interesting um, field of, of uh, both theory and practice uh, in front of us. It's, it's a great time for new kind of um, planning and um, um, I try to discuss that uh, under this notion of experiential urbanism. It's just a title in a way, but um, anyway. Good. Um, um, Lefebvre uh, did not substantiate um, his uh, ideas actually too much. His texts are kind of asset, hypothesis, suggestions. Um, uh, he's much more focusing on the epistemological difficulty to, uh, to see through the singularity, I mean, Stephen Hawking died just now. He was talking about singularity. Can we see it through singularity? And you remember, even the Pope was, was interested in, in that because um, um, Pope thought that uh, if, if there's singularity, you, you can see through the singularity, the God is behind that. And then Hawking, with his, uh, with his uh, famous uh, Hawking radiation of, of the black hole, he somehow was questioning that maybe actually you can see it through singularity. And that's why, why Pope was, was so, so interested in, in Stephen Hawking. But anyway, that's also for, um, for Lefebvre the question that um, can we actually see through the systemic change? I mean, industrial society, the 150 years of, of all that is changing. Something new is coming, and, um, and uh, we don't know what. And uh, it's a deep philosophical, philosophical question. He's talking about um, 
blind field that we're kind of blind we don't we don't uh, see through we cannot actually talk about the new we cannot put that in um, in um, uh, actual um, written knowledge we don't know and um, uh, um, that's true but I think um, as, as, uh, as architects as planners as, as urbanists um, um, we have the great possibility to, to experiment it's of course a bit it's it's not really a strong point philosophically, but it's it's a good point in, in practice that uh, through all kind of, of ex ex experiments, uh, people-based, actor-based, actor social innovations, special in innovations, we can um, uh, actually create the future. We can test what works. We can test uh, what is liked by people, uh, what is uh, helping marginalized uh, communities, as, as uh, in enhanced examples, um, um, what is um, uh, making new kind of, of um, of uh, social constellations possible and sustainable in different cities and so forth. It's, it's very much um, a field of, of experimentation, and that is um, one explanation why this um, dimension of, of, of temporariness, ephemerality, temporary use is, is, um, is important and maybe uh, even, I would say, structurally significant um, uh, notion in the, in the contemporary uh, situation. Clearly, um, um, there are these points about uh, about labor, this double illusion um, and so forth um, 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 in a way that the false idea that space can be designed in this um, modernistic sense um, all that we should focus much more on um, on, on really um, um, uh, people being be, being open open to to new things to novelties and not so much in them um, in them um, in them um, Somehow, in the way how to control, how to how to make it visible, and and, and, and so forth. Um, so it's it's a quite big change in them um, in the way how um, our field, how architecture planning operates. What are our tools? What what is the central focus of, of our activity? Many things should be should be changed in that. Uh, clearly, after Lefebvre, uh, it's quite easy even to take the position that. Um, Urban reality, uh, it's, it's, it's not transparent, uh, there are surprises, um, all these things uh, we know. Um, space is complex, uh, it, it's a process, uh, it's also a humus, it's kind of ground. I really like the Palestinians bringing the ground from, from Palestinia to, to Copenhagen. So, yeah, I was expecting what are the plants that start to grow from that ground? It's it's an interesting question, but that's it's uh, also very um, Levebrian um, uh, question. And um, one way to approach this question, what is this habiting in Leverian sense? Um, what is the, uh, practice? What are the activities that make, um, make uh, something new possible? Um, is to focus on the quite small everyday events, tiny details of, of, uh, of special practice, even gestures, how people behave, uh, how they dress, graffiti, um, all those kind of things. Walking, you all know the, the famous, um, essay by Michel Deserteau on, on the importance of walking, which, which route you take. All, all, all that, um, even decay, things getting old, all those are processes that, um, that um, all the time partake in production of space and production of public space, also more concretely in cities. And we should not forget those seemingly small, but in the end, very, very central things. Um, Godiner, um, so this um, Leverprem process uh, through Giddensian lens and propose that we have this uh, process uh, of, of big structures, um, institutions like planning, for example, then agency, like the agency of, of uh, capitalist real estate developer to do something, and then the, uh, the final uh, urban pattern, the kind of city as, as, as we have it. But then um, uh, very importantly, Michel de Certo makes this point that um, there is also this tactical position, weak, players in the game, for example, individual citizens, small cultural organizations, activists, uh, can also have a role. They can um, uh, misread the, uh, the structures created by the powerful and they can um, do something new. So there is, uh, I think, in this diagram, uh, that is in this, um, I'm sorry, very simplistic picture, um, there is uh, clearly uh, the storyline of them, of them um, big uh, players but also um, there is um, room for um, for um, weak actors and um, uh, I think um, um, novelty is very much coming uh, from uh, successful combinations successful um, 
successful um, niche innovations uh, by uh, quite often the weak actors. Okay, this was very condensed um, uh, theory, and then um, some uh, points um, about um, temporary uses. This is quite much based on, on some articles we have been co-writing with some Ruopila. There is one um, published by, by um, um, fantastic uh, forum, the Serbian Architectural Journal in 2012, and then uh, there is now quite a new book by Wiley, um, uh, Transience and Permanence, um, edited by John Henneberry. That's quite a good, good book, so I, I recommend, uh, recommend to read. Um, it came last year uh, out by Wiley. So we have been working with, with, uh, with Sampo and trying to um, get an overview of the field of temporary uses and also trying to get some uh, theoretical rigor um, as said. I don't feel that I fully succeed in that. But anyway, um, um, oh. um, so here is um, um, just one, uh, one um, reminder from uh, quite early work by Urban Catalyst. So there was a very interesting um, EU project um, also about 20 years ago already, um, uh, called Urban Catalysts. Maybe it's, it's, it's a little bit linked. Uh, did you take part, Hans, in, in this Urban Catalysts? Yeah, I yes, I yes. It was not in Denmark, it was uh, Berlin, of course. There was um, the Dutch group. There was uh, Naples from Italy, uh, uh, Helsinki, and then it, it was Olberg. Really? OK, so there was something. Okay. Of course, Berlin became known as the capital of temporary uses um, then in um, in late 1990s and, and early 2000s with all the moving clubs and, and, and all those things, Tempo de Rome, etc. But, um, but basically, this list is, uh, is coming from that uh, early work. And, and um, just um, it's, it's good because it shows um, how rich also this field can be. So there are really many temporalities. And uh, those very different temporalities um, um, do play a role in, um, in um, what actually, um, um, what, it, what, what, what the role in this change, what role of, of uh, um, finding something new in the uh, urban society uh, can, can be. Clearly, um, uh, the idea of, 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 of impulse or a, a catalyst uh, is, is important. With something uh, rather small, you show a new opportunity, and then maybe other actors join. I think that's, uh, that's quite clear. Um, a pioneer uh, as well. Um, the first urban use of, of, uh, of an empty, derelicted site. Uh, you can imagine all those industrial sites and so forth. But then also, I think very very important point is um, the idea of, of migration. That, okay, you do something somewhere, uh, you learn something, and then you can shift that to other site uh, with other people and, uh, and maybe do something similar but a little bit different. It almost could be linked to, to them um, um, kind of very seasoned so-called typological process, typological process by, by uh, Savary Muratori, uh, Aldo Rossi, and, and others. It tells about how you, what kind of change happens on one site, how one building that in, in some sense stays the same, but over uh, decades, over centuries, and so forth, through small modifications, it actually becomes new. And uh, with this migration, uh, I think something similar happens um, in different way, that, uh, certain practice uh, takes a different shape in, in different place. I think there is, you know, it could be nice to, ah, okay, other article that should be written. Anyway, um, uh, clearly in this uh, debate about temporary uses, um, there are many benefits recognized um, by, by them, cultural, social, um, new constellations, uh, somebody finding somebody, and so forth, some economic benefits. Um, uh, clearly, uh, it's, it's linked to, to ecology as well, adaptive reuse is often, um, more resource efficient than, uh, than some other form of, of change. Uh, and uh, it also can have a positive role, role in planning and management. We can come, come, come back, to, back to later. Uh, dimensions of public, public benefit, um, uh, clearly in the field of culture, the, the main topic of today. But there is the um, economic dimension through, uh, through innovations. Um, um, it's, it's a bit um, hard to, uh, to give an example, but I think the, the Paris plage, the idea that um, uh, during, um, during um, 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 the vacation period in, in summer, uh, the highways on, on the river of the uh, big metropolis, Paris, um, are closed, and uh, there's a sand beach on, 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 on that highway. It's, of course, very symbolic, and, and, and the situation is sandy beach and all that, so it, it's um, it's interesting, almost artistic um, thing. But clearly, it's also, um, also an innovation. I mean, why not? And... Uh, and, and became a model that was then transferred to, to really many other places. There is um, um, 
quite much writing about urban beaches and, and so forth, what, what diff different roles. So it's some kind of innovation, spatial and, and, um, and, um, and, um, and um, a social or, or practice type of, uh, type of innovation that um, creates also um, new um, locations that um, may lead to, to actual real in innovations. I think th there, is, there is something about this um, uh, Jane Jacobs and, um, and um, 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 how something, um, something um, new is, is invented in cities. Uh, it's an example that um, it was possible to innovate a new kind of space, a new kind of practice, a new atmosphere, and um, and in that sense, um, I think it's, it it qualifies as as something interesting, definitely. Good. Um, with um, with Sampo, uh, we have been trying to um, um, find a um, a um, yeah, you could call it uh, a new typology of uh, temporary uses, uh, and um, 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 we have been. Um, Working, um, working with um, with um, different type of location. So, um, um, in the metropolitan cores, like the Paris example, it's now in, in, the, in the picture actually. Um, temporary uses um, can intensify use. Um, you cannot do much. You can imagine Paris or even the center of Helsinki. It's protected. It's already quite dense, uh, high realist values. All these kind of these kind of things, but temporary use can intensify. There is this um, outdoor swimming um, pool now in, in, in Helsinki called Allas Pool. It's one example. Um, with temporary thing, you can do something which intensifies the use. Instead of just a boring boat, there are actually tourists in the sea. It's, it's intensifying the use. Uh, temporary, um, in these uh, underused um, areas of an industrial, it can initiate something new. It, it's, it's part of, 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 um, of um, urban growth and, and change in, in, in that sense. And then, um, in shrinking and declining cities and sites, which is a quite big question um, as well. We, we should not forget that uh, not every city is growing. Very, very many places are actually shrinking. Um, East Germany, uh, northern Finland, and Sweden, big parts of Russia, um, many marginal areas in, in almost any country, even in China. It's, it's, it's actually a big question, this shrinkage. Um, temporary uses can, can um, let's say, redefine um, the space and, and, and uh, community um, temporary uses can uh, can give hope. They can, uh, in some sense, uh, give uh, civic pride and um, and uh, show that uh, life can be good even in the in the shrinking situation. So there is a lot interesting um, in those um, three locations, which creates some kind of um, um, uh, element in the typology of, of temporary uses. Um, clearly. Um, 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 I think we can say that um, um, temporary use, and that's the point, for example, um, 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 Bishop and Williams, there is the book um, Temporary, uh, Temporary City, a bit strange to name actually for the book, uh, which collects very many of, of, of these, uh, these themes. Um, uh, Peter Bishop, uh, Les Leslie Williams, um, um, they make the point that um, temporary uses um, are actually a permanent element of contemporary cities. So it's not something that um, uh, will go away, but no, it's, it's all the time with us in, in some sense. And um, it's an important element, uh, not an ephemeral, curi ephemeral curiosity of, um, of uh, contemporary, um, contemporary um, uh, cities. And um, um, uh, um, somehow, um, in this uh, sense of, of theory, we can say that um, um, they're not too well theorized at the moment. Um, there is um, this um, uh, economic um, economic um, perspective, um, as mentioned, and then there is the political perspective, right to the city, temporary use and uh, understood as, as empowering empowering um, possibility, or I don't like the word tool so much, but, uh, but something like that. You get the point. Temporary use is looked from the, from the developer and planner point of view, and temporary use is looked from the activist, uh, interested citizen point of view. And uh, those two are the theory lines, um, but um, but those two discussions uh, do not really meet. Actually, they are um, they are um, uh, separate. Um, Lauren Andres tries to link. Uh, there is quite good paper uh, about um, one case in Marseille and one, one case in um, in, uh, in Lausanne. Um, what actually um, happens? Uh, how the how the temporary moment, how temporary use actually can influence over long term. I think that's one of one of the questions by by, by Trevor as, as, as well. 
if you do some kind of cultural uh, thing, what influence it has in the end, in the, in the long run, in the big decisions, in, in the development, and so forth. Andres is, is, is uh, discussing that. But um, 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 these two lines, I said, uh, do not meet, and uh, um, we try to a little bit um, um, uh, do that, uh, try to find, um, find um, um, a, a different way, way to theorize. Um, um, how really uh, temporary use is uh, can be understood uh, as important important um, element in creating uh, novel urban environments. Um, um, so the question um, 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 in this situation of of, um, of um, weekend uh, weekend public planning and uh, and uh, maybe even predatory uh, capitalization of, of urban space and practices. So there is a a, um, a tension, of course. Um, good. Um, it's not tools or uh, or valuable uh, spaces, um, and um, um, we somehow um, thought that um, um, in um, finding a um, a uh, bit fresh theory in this situation of, of urban society, um, we could. Um, um, start from the, from the point that okay, it's it's about appropriation. It's about somebody taking a stake and uh, and um, being being having an act, active role in city, appropriating uh, urban space. It is um, um, about creating value, but not only economic. It is about creating, um, for example, a communal, uh, social value for a group, and and, and so forth. And then. Um, it's um, some form of, of conscious production of space, production of, of, uh, of differential space, uh, new social and spatial uh, opportunities, including, of course, um, then um, the experiential dimension, different experiences. I think it's, it's quite important, um, important that um, um, this whole debate in the end um, also, also leads to a, um, a different kind of city in the sense of how we feel about it. Um, Good. Um, this um, 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 right to the city um, debate um, is um, a big debate in itself. I don't go go in um, any depth in it. In it. Um, there are um, many many writers um, active in it. But uh, I think Harvey in the uh, Rebel City, it's quite quite nice book. Um, he makes a good point that um, uh, the right to the city, it's not only the right to be there. Uh, it's, it's, it's not only the right to have access to the urban amenities, but it's really the right to reinvent the city. That's kind of uh, Harvey's rereading of, of Lefebvre um, 40 years after, after Lefebvre, and I think that's quite interesting. And um, it, of course, links uh, our debate uh, very much to planning, to policy, to, to democracy, to, um, to possibility to, to partake in them, in the shaping of, of our, our, um, um, our um, uh, let's say, uh, living conditions or, or uh, life world. Good. So um, I just uh, show again this appropriation, creation of value, production of space, and then um, uh, as I said in this thought process, we, we try to um, we try to find um, some concepts that that could uh, could help us to um, to understand different aspects of temporary uses as structural element uh, of, of uh, contemporary um, uh, urbanism, and. Um, uh, these margins, it came in, in, in Hans' um, presentations, um, presentation um, very, very clearly. Um, um, yeah, I even, even referred to actually Hans. Uh, yeah. I had a um, um, possibility to, to, to read the fantastic book on, on Roskilde the Festival. And, um, and there, is, um, there is this, um, this um, point that uh, really during the week when, when the event takes place, um, um, the social uh, manners and the limiting norms uh, moralizing authority is put aside, and um, it's simply a moment of festival. And uh, I think that's that's very very important. Uh, and this only can happen in um, in socio socio spatial margin. You cannot have the festival. Okay, the Paris Blas is then an example, but um, there are nice stories how people behave in the Paris Blas, and you can imagine all the French people with dressed even much better than than me with with nice nice polished shoes, and then they go to the beach. And it's what 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 happened. So, but um, but anyway, um, uh, um, margins in the sense of sense of, of, of uh, Rob Shields saying that um, margins 
um, our cultural central. Shields is, is discussing Niagara Falls, um, the, um, the um, um, role of this kind of uh, touristic and, and, uh, and uh, in, in uh, spatial sense, sense marginal locations. For example, for, um, for, um, for the um, marriage um, festivities of people and so forth. So margins are cultural central and, and something very important happens in, in, in margins um, temporarily. Uh, then um, the notion of um, follow, that's um, from different uh, contexts completely. It, it, it comes from, um, from um, um, Franz Oswald and Peter Bacchini. There is um, a quite, quite well-read book by planners called Netstadt. Um, uh, it's it's um, written in, in German, but, but exists also in, in English. And um, they say that um, these um, uh, empty and underused spaces geographically are uh, also all the time present. It's of course true. Cities change, and there's always some location somewhere that are not defined. They are, um, they are uh, underused and undefined, and there are the urban follows. They make, it, they make something new possible. And, um, it's an um, interesting, uh, interesting notion that, um, that um, in some sense brings this uh, bit uh, social and not rooted discussion to land and, and to, to even to maps, if you want, want to see it. Uh, like that. Then um, we can discuss um, temporary uses uh, as, uh, as amenities, as something like um, library and, uh, and, and school, maybe a uh, local shop. Um, these are, uh, these are um, amenities. And, um, and um, we propose with Sambo that um, the, um, the, um, the difference, uh, the novelty, the, the new kind of, of uh, atmosphere new kind of possibilities uh, temporary uses provide, they actually should, should or could be seen as, as uh, amenities um, that uh, could be, could be um, seen as a uh, necessary, important part of, of any urban context, any urban situation. We all can imagine, for example, I remember myself um, working um, in Berlin uh, some time ago. Our, our son was younger and um, he still wanted to play. In Berlin there were these um, um, squatted uh, playgrounds in, in empty, slot, empty, empty lots. And it was, it was fantastic. Instead of just a boring street, a shop, and then an organized uh, play area, there was this wild zone. And it was fantastic. It definitely was an amenity. And um, again, it only can act, exist temporarily. It's people driven, self-organized, temporary, but can move to other places. So it's some kind of public good even to all, all citizens, you could, you could say. And then there is a very big discussion about urban commons. That's, that's very interesting, and um, it's an uh, other um, issue that should be developed much, much further. But uh, we have this um, distinction between public and private, we all know, I mean, public uh, land, public space, uh, blah, blah, blah. and then um, rather stupid discussion on, on semi-private and semi-public and, and blah, 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 all, all that. It's not, not leading anywhere. But uh, commons is a notion that actually could uh, help us to, to find uh, new opportunities. And um, it again, um, Harvey has been uh, discussing that um, there is quite a nice article by, um, by Hess uh, mapping um, all kind of commons. There are, of course, hundreds if, if, you, if you want to list it, starting from Wikipedia and, and coming down to, to, uh, to shared um, uh, land and, and, and so forth. But um, basically, um, 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 Hess is um, saying that um, Common is a uh, resource that is um, shared by a group um, where um, a resource is uh, vulnerable. It's, it's somehow, um, um, uh, there is not enough of, of, of that. And um, 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 unlike um, public good, it requires some management and some protection to sustain. I think it's, it's, it's quite interesting. So um, we often um, tend to think that, for example, in, uh, again, in Nordic cities that are not that dense, um, I think it's quite um, interesting to think that um, um, good public space, it's, it's not scarcity in some sense. We have space. Uh, and then um, the more we use, the better it gets. It's not if, if, if we go to, to, to Hong Kong, it's not like that. It's, it's too, too congested. But in our context, it's definitely um, the more people use, the better. It's, it's, it's more about contacts. You are you're meeting more people. It's more interesting, interesting all that. And um, in that sense, um, in that sense, um, um, uh, it's actually users who produce the value. Users create the value. And um, um, 
the question is that um, how we should um, react to that uh, as, as planners and, and policy makers. Um, one point is that, and that's Harvey's point, that um, um, it's wrong that uh, the real estate owners get the value because th the more there is people, the more there is flow, the more there is also economic potential, and real estate values go up. So basically, people should get at least part of that economic value they produce through their presence in, in a way. And I think that's quite an inter interesting point to, to policy regarding, regarding commons. But also, and um, 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 again referring to, to, to the previous um, presentation and this super keelen, there is also uh, some need to, um, to, in some sense, um, protect or organize those processes case by case. And um, there is a quite differential role to planning policy compared to what, um, what were used in, um, in the previous uh, industrial situation. How to softly uh, curate maybe, how to make it a little bit better, how to um, manage so that some uh, non-wanted things are not there and so forth. So, commons, they are um, created by the group, um, but they need uh, some um, protection. Good. Those are the, um, the four, um, the four um, 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 ways we try to discuss, uh, discuss um, that field, um, uh, margins, follows uh, amenities, and commons. And um, clearly, we want to argue that um, a specific, as I said earlier, place-based uh, relation in the complex and self-organizing urban process, that's the key to uniqueness, to novelty, to, to difference. And um, that's, um, that's um, what makes uh, temporary uses um, interesting, that makes them work um, in the current uh, situation. Good. Um, experimental, um, um, they lead to spatial social uh, innovations. Um, they um, facilitate new actors to come to the fore, um, groups that otherwise would be, would be invisible in the city. And they may be uh, consciously political uh, alternatives for, um, for um, a new uh, society. Um, they do require some uh, safeguarding, as said, some policy, and um, some criteria for a possible policymaker on, on, on that field uh, might be those three, a uniqueness of the play, um, the value could be also social, et cetera, value of action, and then the difference itself. If it's all the same, it may be less interesting than, than, than really different. But this is also, I'm not quite sure how important this is, but, um, but, um, but um, some possible criteria. And then um, clearly um, 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 showing them um, the differences in the kind of isotopy, everything is about money, of the capitalist uh, state. They um, might be discussed as, as heterotopias, and um, um, they um, might represent uh, the future of um, our cities in uh, making. That's, uh, in short, the theory. I think my time is out, pretty much. So um, um, I thought that um, I could um, discuss these um, Helsinki, Helsinki cases, but um, maybe uh, just one, uh, uh, there's one story, but, um, but um, uh, one, no, no, I, it's, it's actually, um, um, I just, um, this is something, uh, one slide is enough. Uh, what do you want to do? That's, that's uh, here. Uh, it's Oransi. It's um, um, a organization in Helsinki that started in uh, early 1990s as, as a squatting, squatting organization, but then quite quickly they, they started to um, act differently and uh, they started to negotiate with the city. They got um, um, old buildings and uh, started to repair themselves for cheap youth housing. So they, cr they created cheap housing. They created... Uh, new opportunities, uh, it was a learning process, uh, it was uh, self-managed uh, and cheap. So it became an um, alternative, quite interesting model for youth housing, and they still operate like that. So it, it became a very sustainable uh, model. It's now, I think, 30 years or so, can it be true, quite long. Um, but then also, they started to organize, again, temporary cultural centers. So it was this group of active youth and, and doing some things. So they also got, um, uh, cultural centers um, for a short time, a old shopping mall that was soon to be demolished or stuff like that. And um, then we were involved in many, many ways with, with Orange's activities during these uh, decades in, in our um, architectural office. But then um, around 2011, uh, after the uh, horrible story about uh, this railway 
warehouse is here, basically where um, very interesting um, cultural space, um, self-organized space was in the end destroyed uh, by, by real estate process in, in Helsinki. It was such a wound in the city that the city gave other industrial space, Suvilahti, um, to temporary users. They wanted to heal a little bit. And, um, and this uh, um, Oransi group got um, the, the last building in that new area, uh, Suvilahti, as their next cultural um, space. And then we acted as, as curator of, of that process. And, um, and um, I think it's, it's, um, it's um, in our discussion today, it's um, important to realize that um, in uh, every city, in every location, this, um, let's say, the field or the scene of, of uh, temporary uses, of, of, um, of new experiential opportunities, it also has long histories. And in, in, in this case, there is the whole Helsinki planet tradition starting, I don't know when, but then also this um, big conflict uh, around late uh, 90s, uh, early 2000s, 20 years ago, conflict that led a mark in the memory of the community of Helsinki and then led to a bit surprising decision by the city to give um, this space for, for um, temporary cultural users, um, self-managed in a certain way, we could discuss at, at length how, and then um, how this um, uh, migrating temporary use of the uh, self-organized uh, cultural um, uh, center of youth is then located in this one and how that was done. So there is interesting story. It looks quite nice. I mean, here is the head working himself graffiti and so forth. Good. I stop here. Ah, sorry. Um, I stop here and um, maybe we have time for a question or two. Thanks. Yes, uh, Maunu. Okay. Uh, I'm Maunu Hörnen from the University of Turku. Uh, thanks for a very inspiring presentation, Panu. Uh, I would like to ask about the connection. How do you see the connection between um, cultural planning and the temporary uses of space? How much they can be integrated into a planning process in, in, in your view? Or how, how manageable you see they would be? Yes. Um, I was thinking this, this um, notion of cultural planning and um, uh, um, clearly um, they are um, part of, of, of same field and, and, and same, same discussion. Um, we did um, some years ago um, a project with, uh, with SIPO, it's a municipality next to Helsinki, a quite rural municipality and um, there is um, uh, an old um, uh, mental asylum, very large um, complex, huge hospital that is um, uh, partly in new uses uh, in, in, in housing, but then um, all the central buildings, fantastic Jugendstil buildings are empty. And um, they wanted to, um, to do a cultural planning project to, to do something with that. And um, they brought some Swedish uh, people um, and um, the kind of concept of, of cultural planning um, re rewritten by somebody uh, at that time, some years ago, 2000, maybe 15. Was it? Yeah, I think so, or 16, yeah, 2015. You can Google our website um, with Nikkila if, if, if somebody wants to, wants to see the, the project is, is, is there or in, in Isipo. But anyway, they wanted uh, this cultural approach and uh, then we did it. We, we did a uh, mapping of, of, of cultural resources, uh, a little bit Charles, Charles Landry style, of course, in, in the built environment, in, uh, in the memory of, of the mental asylum of some um, very interesting uh, cultural products of, of the mentally ill. Very many um, key poets and painters of Finland actually stayed there. It's, it's quite, it's, it's uh, not a not well, well um, written story. So there is a um, big cloud of, of cultural resources. I don't know if it's that right word anymore, but it was the right word in the 1990s. And then, um, uh, so it was interesting and, and it, it did work in, in many ways. We found uh, resources for cultural planning. Um, because the normal planning did not work. They could not put these buildings in use with normal planning and real estate process. That was the starting point. And um, then, um, obviously, um, we proposed quite many um, temporary interventions how to actually make the cultural resources concretely happen. So what could happen? Because of these reasons, I tried to explain. It's temporary temporary um, projects are easier to do 
and, uh, and um, uh, clearly one good option. So in, in, in that sense, I think there is definitely a link. And um, as I try to argue, if, if you look at the other way around, clearly these um, differential spaces, new kind of locations and atmospheres, they are cultural resource in themselves in city. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Leah. Yes. Just, uh, just briefly. I, I don't want to take too much time, but it is a lot of reflections from your presentation. Um, the, there is almost a sense of romanticism around uh, temporary interventions. Um, I do understand that temporary interventions break the rules. Uh, break the norm and, and bring a lot of experimentation and energy in a city or neighborhood or within a community. My problem, however, is how much do I let this happen? Where is the learning from these experiences going into? How is it fed into the bloodstream of the city? Yes. Um, are we feeding that? into a vision for how the city wants to change ultimately, or are we just doing them in a sort of postmodern, fun yes. uh, way because it's entertaining and because it gives something to the participants too. It empowers them too. But then again, if we leave them out there because we haven't got funding to continue this, or if it's not part of a whole vision for the city, then demoralization sets yes. in. Yes. So I have a, a you know, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm not, it's not a criticism yeah. or anything. It's just like thinking. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the question. This is this is important question, and, and um, I'm quite aware that um, that also, I mean, myself and, and these kind of presentations. Actually, I do objectify my topic, unfortunately, and I'm I'm, aware, I'm not yet um, able to. Maybe the video is, is is a way, or I don't know how to how to avoid that. But clearly, you're right. There is um, um, maybe. Um, a little bit um, misled uh, romanticism on on um, on, um, on that um, way to to discuss about um, about temporary uses and as I said um, also question of of, um, of object wine not not looking the real actors the real process their uh, actual uh, difficulties and so forth but um, 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 one question is that um, if somebody really has um, um, will to do something uh, different. And I think the case of Oransi, this, this uh, self-organized cultural um, uh, center, is in that. I think it's fine. There, there are young people, a group who, who is uh, getting uh, um, new members, interest, they, they have needs, and they can realize their needs in a way that could not happen in any other way. What is, what is um, then uh, uh, needed uh, from them, in that case, city, who is then the regulator, is some kind of understanding that um, this activity should have continuity in the next location. So it needs, needs a little bit understanding and, and responsibility so that um, when the location A is closed, there is location B in, in, in the way. Yes, they need some, some support in, in that sense, which, which can be quite, quite lightweight. And then um, 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 what is, them, um, what is them, um, the bigger picture, in my opinion, it is linked to uh, how we understand good city life and good urban policy as, as kind of sub, sub chapter of that, so that uh, there is a real valuation of these uh, novel spaces and, and practices. And, and it's, you're right, it's horrible if it's a decoration. It should be taken seriously. It is a serious part of, of urban process and urban life. It's not horrible, it's tactical urbanism, mm. which, which I'm very much in favor of. Yes. But I, at the same time, I cannot ignore that we also need a strategic urbanism. Yes. We need some kind of sense of direction yes. uh, uh, from whoever is in charge of yes. governing the city. Yes. Now, whether uh, tactical urbanism brings new stakeholders into the governance of yes. the city is ideal, and then we, we may are in a different scenario, uh, etc. Mm. But, yeah, in my view, we should need to connect mm. the strategic you element. Both. Yes. Strategic element to the tactical. Yes, that's a good question because um, uh, uh, Helsinki copied uh, the idea to um, to actually u use temporary uses as a tool in the strategic de development. Th that idea was copied from somewhere. May maybe I can't now recall who actually did it at first. But anyway, it, it, it came to Helsinki uh, in, in early 2000s, about uh, 10 years ago. 
and um, uh, instead of just uh, putting a plan and starting to build, build uh, in, in some new areas in Kalasatama, in Kronovaranata, which are large new developments, really big, uh, definitely uh, defining the shape of housing in the future, they wanted to, uh, to start with temporary uses. And they, they put in a very nice program uh, with some uh, funds from the city, a curator, uh, open process, everything. Um, it seemed great. Yeah, now it's happening, and, uh, and temp temporary users are invited. And then, but what happened is that um, some in the city did not like what, what happened. It, it was too something, too creative, or it was wrong. And they stopped it, just like that, bam. And then um, one or two, that, that's the case of Kalasatama, one or two years after the two years that the funding was there, these actors still did something, but without money. And then the um, city started to just organize big events. Just uh, they in, invite some uh, Peter Gabriel to sing or something like that. And they thought that that's, they put the same money in, in Peter Gabriel and big concert. And that was quite wrong. It, it's, um, so it, it's, it's not easy to, um, to, um, to really do. I, I, think, uh, I think that's what you mean, that um, the city did not trust its own process in the sense of, of actually doing something new. They wanted to anyway do the same. And then when something new started to happen, they just cut the funds and, and uh, let, let those people. So it is not easy. And, and definitely we are dealing with, with heavy processes, with big organizations and, and so forth. And um, in, uh, in Tampere, there is a little bit different process on the way. No, right now, Tampere is second city, so it's smaller context than Helsinki. It's a large new area for 20, 25,000 new people and, and, and jobs um, uh, called Hiranta. And uh, it started. Uh, in more real sense with uh, all kind of temporary uses, even companies uh, operating for a short time in, in industry space and, and so forth. And uh, it has been now running very successfully for some years, about three years. And now there is a discussion, what next? So the city is really careful in, in not spoiling that process, but it's still not easy to find the what next. But uh, at least there is a, a discussion ongoing on that. Okay, I think we're going to have to uh, round it up there. I mean, you touched on uh, many of the issues we've also uh, had previously in, in, this, in this urban lab, and they're very, they're very vital uh, discussions and uh, considerations. Um, and, and Leah is pointing out, you might say, the danger or the, uh, the, the, the result in many cases, what, what, what may happen um, is that perhaps the potential of these spaces and places and, and networks and activities is not really understood or, or, or can be managed by uh, and become normalized in, in a way, this normalization of, of, of places. So, it, uh, so I think that's, that's the danger. Um, there are, and, it's, and it's, it's basically also, I suppose, it's a question of when you say about um, the right to places, the right to be able to create, the right to be able to, uh, you might say, um, uh, have access to, um, uh, to the city and the right to also generate new activities and create has a, has a lot about ownership and has a lot about, uh, uh, you might say, um, uh, political mandate and has a lot about financing. Um, but there are some places where, where it, ha it has happened and it has survived and somehow keeps going. And I don't know if, if I, I should, because we have a couple of people here from, I just thought, would you like to say something? I'm not going to say who it is. I think you know who it is because I'm looking at you. But, um, but do you want to say something in, in this situation? Or would you rather not? I don't want to hang you out on and put you on an edge and push you into the deep end. I'm, I'm looking at you, yeah. Yeah. So do you want to come in here? Because I think this, this discussion actually is quite interesting from where you come from and where, you, where you've been. Um, I mean, I'm thinking about Christiania, right? So because so I, 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 I just think that that is actually... You might was interesting as you are you are an architect and you work on issues like this and you talk about how to create sustainable alternative you might say societies which has existed now in in you know for 45 years or whatever it is um, and I think it's actually at that time you would call it a squat or we'd call it you call it a a temporary space but actually what it is has developed into is something which is which is, you might say, managed to maintain its independence while being accepted. So it's actually managed to do that, which we don't think is possible. And, and why is that? Why did that happen? And why doesn't it happen any other place? Uh, it happened because there was no other plans in the 72. And uh, it happens because there was a strong feeling of uh, communities 
And it happened because there was uh, low rent or non-rent in the start. And low rent is very important, uh, is one of the, the things. So if you want to develop a city with uh, this kind of uh, life in, you have to have uh, smaller places of low rent that can pull the, the uh, development of the city in that direction you want. And um, of course you have to have people that burns for, uh, for developments and you have to take them seriously. You have to, to, I understand the lady over there talking about having a greater plan for a city but uh, uh, you have to, if you give power to uh, some people, you have to take them seriously, uh, that they want to uh, use that power or use that energy, uh, not to uh, ask them for something and then take it back uh, and then uh, say it was a game uh, uh, and then make other plans. Take them seriously, make them a mo motor, an uh, engine, make them uh, an engine for, for what you want and uh, let them be there for some time. And it's very important that, it, they, that they don't uh, owe, uh, that they don't own the, the, the houses, but they rent the houses. So they are changing because otherwise they will be stable as the rest of the city. Mm. Which is an interesting point. Is this, is this yeah. thing about spaces which are unstable yeah. or destabilized on the edge and are always changing? Yes. So there is it's an, an inertia in it them, is which is interesting. Difficult. There's no permanent owner who is like looking at it as a long-term investment or family or, mm -hmm. or the right to forever. Marco, you come from uh, Berlin and you're, you're, you're practicing in Berlin and you, you've been through this, experienced this a lot. I mean, how, how are the things we're talking about here um, uh, can you reflect on, and, and has it given rise to, you might say, another way of urban thinking and urban practice and uh, a sense of other kind of communities which are more in control of their own, you might say, daily life, their own creativity, their own, their own yeah. Well, I moved to Berlin in 91, and what was in front of me was a playground, a huge playground where we could actually use the, the whole city center of uh, East Berlin, of course, especially Berlin Mitte. And uh, uh, the funny thing was that uh, nobody knew how long we could use one space. And this gave us a huge freedom of not considering time as uh, some, something obsessive to us. It was, uh, yeah, like it was. Sometimes it lasted one day, some other times a couple of years. But those, was, those were the rules which were unwritten. This was a result of this uh, vacuum we had uh, in this uh, specific uh, historical period due to the collapse of one state and uh, the time that uh, the new state, the, the Federal Republic, needed to control the city. It was a time of anarchy that, uh, yeah, that defined our childhood. Some kind of experience like this are still running, of course. Uh, there is a big process of uh, uh, normalization. But, uh, Pano, you quoted Berlin many times. And, uh, yeah, still Berlin is, uh, yeah, it gave us some uh, yeah, suggestions about how to deal with temporary space. You want to say one last word? Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's tie it up there. And uh, uh, now we're not going to even give you a two-minutes break. We're going to give you a one-minute break.